Hi guys, uh, today we're going to take a look at Warzone 1, which has been rebalanced in the past two patches, and uh, I think it's finally at a stage where you can actually hunt it. Um, don't get me wrong, it's not going to be some amazing spot, it's, it's kind of still around C tier. However, the big improvement is that this place is just not as annoying as it always was. Previously, before the rebalances, this place was just unhuntable due to all the annoying, incredibly annoying mechanics and the summons and the mana drain, etc, etc. So Tiptoft has resolved that, that this place is actually huntable now. It's not super annoying. The values are still not quite good enough, but at least it's kind of a manageable, manageable hunt. So let's take a look at the values that you can expect here. I recommend this place for a level 500 plus EK, I think is uh, somewhere where you can start. I was here at level 590 and I didn't find find it to be too difficult. I was able to do it without any praise or charms. Um, so raw experience can expect is somewhere around 3.5, which obviously isn't very good for this level. However, the profit is pretty decent. You can expect at least 1kk per hour. I think if you speed up the, the loops a little bit, you will be able to... Um, get more than 1kk per hour even overall tier rating i would give it somewhere around c plus it's definitely not going to be a meta spawn but it's kind of all right it's huntable now right difficulty i would give it around six out of ten um the monsters here don't have very much health at least they're hideous and humongous fungus like it's sometimes when you do like a powerful crit you almost one shot them so um it's not actually too difficult because of that uh, and the beast cherry will take about seven hours for hideous humongous fungus um, however, most people I expect have those through war zones anyway from doing the war zone boss runs. So what you really care about is the armor deal and stone devourer, which uh, for me, it takes about 16 hours to complete those. So that's what you're probably looking at if you want to do that beast cherry for those 100 points down there. Uh, moving on, you will need, like mentioned, level 500 plus, you will need to have the Bigfoot Burdens quest completed with access to war zones. Uh, probably want to give in the item so you have free access. You will need a fire weapon, you will need a dwarven ring, and this place, I expect, can be effectively hunted by knights or paladins. I mean, I gave a yes to a paladin, but I think it's kind of more of a maybe because there's a lot of ranged creatures. Obviously, paladins, range, etc. is nowhere near as strong. Uh, so I don't know really how fun it would be here to hunt as a paladin. It's probably manageable, especially if you care about Armadil and Stone Devourer, Bestiary. They are melee, so, you know, you'll be still be able to progress that Bestiary and kill them quite easily. Uh, but it's probably not going to be that that amazing. And same sort of for Druid and Sorcerers. You can probably, you know, AoE around. Um, probably going to be doing all right, but it's still not going to be a great, sp uh, great spot. So uh, it's, it's kind of still very annoying to hunt here. I recommend all standard imbuements, and I wouldn't really worry about a defensive imbuement. Like I mentioned, this place is not that difficult, so not difficult enough, in my opinion, to be uh, getting a defensive imbuement for this spot specifically. And you will want to prioritize physical protection followed by earth protection and then followed by ice protection. They're both pretty close, around 20%. Uh, moving on, I used about 600, uh, 100 supreme health potions per hour and about 2,800 strong mana potions per hour. Uh, charms, I didn't have any. I would uh, recommend Inflame on the Hideous Fungus and Wound, Low Blow, or Parry on the Humongous Fungus once you've got those two monsters unlocked. Uh, for the wheel, Ixari Mass, you're probably going to be boxing for the most part, so uh, I would probably go for Ixari Mass. The Ixari Grand Wheel will also be pretty good because the boxes shouldn't be that long. They shouldn't really last more than three or four turns. Uh, so Ixari Grand Wheel will also be fine. And the character you'll see in the video is level 590 EK with 128 Axe Skill of Loyalty and no Praise or Charms active. So we're going to take a look at the route. Now the first thing you'll notice is that I have these two yellow circles around here at the bottom right. And this... Um, is where most of the stone devourers and armor deals spawn, or at least a big part of them, and nothing else spawns there. So it's kind of awkward because you really want to go there to get the beast cherry on those two, but it lowers your experience and loot rate per hour because there's nothing else there and the density is quite low. So it's kind of a dilemma, uh, but I expect most people hunting here will care about the beast cherry first of all, so you will want to be swinging by these two sections here to make sure you pick those monsters up. Anyway, the route I do is, um, oh, there's blue, is it? Ah, it's, it's visible. Okay, it's kind of awkward. It's not the greatest color, but maybe I'll change the color. Hang on, let me just choose a different color, maybe this one. Okay, I think this one's a bit better, this blue. Uh, so anyway, I start somewhere here. I'll do a pull somewhere here, usually one somewhere around here, one here, one here. Then I'll, yeah, go in here. I'll pull out all the monsters, usually do a pull somewhere around here, go up here, probably do another pull somewhere here, another pull in here. Uh, another pull in here, 
then I'll do another one in here. On this note, I will say that there is this ability to use the um, trigger the automatic spawns for the boss war zone through the crystal. Uh, personally, I don't bother for two reasons. First of all, it gets really chaotic and hectic. Um, it's kind of rough. Um, you can do it if you want to. It will increase your experience and loot per hour, I expect. However, the big drawback is that it only spawns the fungus, uh, which if you care about bestiary, which again, I expect most people who here care about the bestiary first and foremost, they do not spawn any armadillos or stow devourers. So it's kind of pointless. You just you're just killing the fungus. It's not really uh, that worth it if you care about the beast, Jerry. So I personally skip it. Anyway, you'll do another pull somewhere around here. Another pull somewhere around here. Then I'll go do another pull here. And I'll usually go and do another pull here and then restart. So it's it's quite a nice loop. Uh, they added those two corridors recently, which means that you can do a nice round loop without backtracking. So that's nice. The monsters are nowhere near as annoying as they used to be. So that's nice. Uh, the results are still very average, unfortunately. Uh, so it is what it is. But again, good changes overall to make this at least a huntable place. Because let me tell you, this place was absolutely awful before all the rebalances due to all the annoying mechanics that the monsters had. Whereas now it's actually kind of huntable. So uh, you can at least aim to complete the bestiary here without tearing your hair out. Anyway, that's what I have for you today, guys. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.